In our previous video, polynomial functions part one, we defined what a polynomial function is, uh, what the degree of the polynomial is. Um, we also spoke about power functions, graphing polynomials using transformations. And we did one simple exercise of graphing a polynomial using the zeros of the polynomial, which we also defined what a zero is in the previous video. But we said that um, finding the zeros of a polynomial, the example that I gave you was this. That was easy. But finding the zeros of a polynomial of the third degree, of the fourth degree, fifth degree, is not so easy. So that's what we're going to tackle in this video. To do that, we are going to need three theorems. The first theorem is called the factor theorem. And it says that if f of x is a polynomial function, then if the value of the polynomial for this value of x is equal to 0, then x minus c is a factor of the polynomial. And the other way around is also true, but let's concentrate on this one. Let me give you an example right away. Given this polynomial, let's say that I want to test if f of 1 is 0. You may wonder why 1? Just because. I will explain later how to test, which numbers to test. But let's say that I want to test if the value of this polynomial for x equals 1 is 0. So I plug 1, whatever x goes, 5 times 1 plus 6, and what do I get? 1 minus 2 minus 5 plus 6, which is 0, because we have plus 7 minus 7. It is 0. Therefore, we know based on the factor theorem that x minus 1 is a factor of f of x. And how do we use that? Well, we can use synthetic division, right? Right? Using synthetic division that we are supposed to know by now. Um, so what we do is we take the coefficients from here, 1, negative 2, negative 5, and 6. And um, then we're going to test that number here, right? Copy this number down, right? 1 plus nothing is going to be 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 1, I'm sorry, negative 2 plus 1 is going to be negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. 6 plus negative 6 is 0. Perfect. When I get a remainder of 0, that means that this polynomial is divisible by this polynomial. Therefore, this polynomial is a factor of that one, which means that I can write f of x as x minus 1 times what this tells me. This means this is going to be x squared minus x minus 6. Notice this. this. This was a polynomial of third degree. So these are the coefficients of the polynomial of a second degree because it is the result of dividing a third degree polynomial by a one degree polynomial. So I know that this corresponds to x squared and therefore this corresponds to x and this corresponds to the independent term, the term that doesn't contain x. Okay, that was very easy, but I pull that number 1 out of the thin air, so how do you test? For that we need uh, the other theorems that I mentioned before. The second theorem simply tells us that if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, then it has at most n distinct real zeros. That allows us to not keep on looking for more zeros when there isn't any more. The rational zeros theorem 
says that if f of x is a polynomial of degree 1 or greater and um, the leading coefficient is not 0 and the last coefficient is not 0 and all coefficients are integers this is important right? all coefficients are integers and a sub 0 is not 0 then if this rational number is a 0 of the polynomial the numerator of the rational zero is a factor of x a sub zero. And the denominator is a factor of the leading coefficient. So how do we use that? Let's say that we want to find the rational zeros of this polynomial. According to the rational zeros theorem, if P over Q, if P over Q is a um, zero of this polynomial, then P must be a factor of negative two, and Q must be a factor of three. So what are the factors of negative two? The factor of negative two are plus or minus one and plus or minus two the divisors of negative 2. And the factors or divisors of 3 are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. So any fraction that is a 0 of this polynomial has to be of this form. So what are the possible zeros? For the possible zeros, what we have to do is, well, let's say 1 divided by 1 would give me 1. 2 divided by 1 would give me 2. 1 divided by negative 1 would give me negative 1. 2 divided by negative 1 would give me negative 2. What other possibilities do I have? 1 divided by 3 or 1 divided by negative 3 or 2 divided by 3 or 2 divided by negative 3. Those are all the possible rational zeros. Okay, so it's a little bit tedious, but you have to start testing each and every one of them. And we test all those possible zeros either using the factor theorem or using synthetic division. So let's test x equals 1. If x equals 1 is supposed to be a 0 of this polynomial, then f of 1 must be 0. So let's see. Um, 3 times 1 to the 4th minus 5 times 1 to the 3rd plus 1 squared minus 5 times 1 minus 2. And if you check that out, that is not 0. So Nope, it's not a zero of this polynomial. Um, that is one way of doing it. The other way is to do synthetic division, which I believe it's, it's going to take longer than doing this, but let me show you. How do we do synthetic division? We take the coefficients from this polynomial. I'm going to put the coefficients here. 3, negative 5, 1, negative 5, and negative 2, right? By taking this coefficients and putting them right here. And if I want to test if x equals 1 is a 0, then I do synthetic division. 3 plus nothing here is going to be 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 1 plus negative 2 is negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 5 plus negative 1 is going to be negative 6. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. And these two numbers added is not 0. So either by using the factor theorem, we see that the value of the polynomial is not 0. 
or using synthetic division, we see that the remainder is not zero. So either way, this is not a good. This is not a zero at that point in moment. So what about if we test um, two? Let's test two. What is f of two? f of two will be three times two to the fourth minus five times two to the third plus two squared minus five times two minus two. And if you do that calculation, you're going to see that that is zero. Okay, excellent. So x equals two is a zero. So that means that if we do the synthetic division with x equals two, we should get zero here. So let's see. Three, two times three is six. Negative five plus six is one. Two times one is two. One plus two is three. Two times three is six. Negative five plus six is one. Two times one is two. And negative two plus two is zero, which is what we expected. And um, notice this. These are the coefficients of a fourth degree polynomial. Fourth degree polynomial. And the coefficients that we get here are the coefficients of the reduced polynomial. And this reduced polynomial is the result of dividing a fourth degree polynomial by a first degree polynomial. Therefore, it's going to be a third degree polynomial. So that means that the original polynomial can be factored this way. 2 is a 0. So that means that x minus 2 is a factor. And the reduced polynomial, this is going to be the coefficient of x cubed, because I know it is th third degree polynomial. So this is going to be 3x cubed. This is going to be the coefficient of x squared. This of x. And this is the independent term, the term that doesn't contain the x. So, um, not x, 1. Okay, but why stop here? We can't go on with this using our possible zeros, right? So we shouldn't stop right there. So let's let's go on. Let's go on with the synthetic division process. 3, 1, 3, 1. And remember that the possible zeros were this. And we already tested 1, turned out not to be a 0. 2 turn out to be a zero and you should go on testing all of them. I'm going to save time and tell you that the next zero, that this is not going to be a zero, neither with this one, neither that one, negative one third is going to be a zero. But of course you don't know that, so you have to test all of them. So three plus zero is just three. When you multiply this two, you're going to get negative one. And 1 plus negative 1 is 0, and negative 1 third times 0 is 0, 3 plus 0 is 3, and negative 1 third times 3 is going to give me negative 1, and I get a 0 there. Therefore, that means that x equals negative 1 third is a 0. Therefore, x minus 1 third is a factor of the given polynomial. Which means that so far we know that f of x is, can be written as x minus 2 times x minus 1 third and the reduced polynomial is going to be a polynomial of second degree. So this is a coefficient of Mm, x squared, so this is going to be 3x squared, there is no x, and plus 3. Now, it is very easy to see that this polynomial that resulted here is irreducible. It cannot be factored. There is no value of x that will make this ever zero, no real value of x. You will see that if you try to solve this equation, you will see that 3x squared will be equal to negative 3, and therefore x squared equals to negative 1. 
but this equation has no solution in the real numbers. So um, you can leave the polynomial the way it is, or you can do this. You can say that f of x is equal to x minus 2 uh, times x minus 1 third. What I'm going to do is factor this 3 from this third factor. And now I'm going to multiply this 3 by this term here. Why? Because it looks prettier. No other reason. Okay? There is nothing wrong with leaving the polynomial like this. Okay, so if the question was what were the real zeros of this polynomial, they were 2, negative 1 third, and that's it. No more real zeros.